information for decision makers. Considering safe. Curated review of facts, evidence, and opinions from relevant. Sources without vested interests to help decision makers make. Informed choices and get better results. Last updated on January 1, 2024. Introduction. Now that Agile has passed the early adopter stage, many companies are interested in adopting it, and many novice practitioners are interested in learning it. Yet those companies and practitioners without extensive Agile experience have a hard time evaluating what will bring them value and what will not. They look at the marketing from SAFE, and they don't know if they can trust it or not. In this document, members of the Agile community are collecting available information, including on these marketing stories. Some practitioners have been there and know the difference between marketing and real stories, others know not only how things started but also how things are going now. The information collected in this document is to help them make an informed decision. If you like it, reshare it, https colon slash slash bit a y slash safe for decision makers. The links to all the sources used for this article, each containing further details and a more detailed account of the related events, are in Appendix 1. How to use this document. You can download this document, open the file menu and select Download, and if necessary edit it to leave only the most relevant info before sharing it with a decision maker. You may want to create and share a one-page summary to introduce the topic to the decision maker before sharing the whole document. In both cases include the link to the original document. For practitioners you may want to share directly the link to this document. Contributors and guidelines for contributions. This document is a collective effort with multiple contributions, mainly from the Agile community. The list of contributors is long. They are the experts and the practitioners. Mentioned below whose posts and articles have been linked in Appendix 1, the many readers who suggested several improvements, those who worked on the case studies, and the curators of this effort, Luca Minuttel and Eve Hanel. A special thanks also goes to Thomas J. Owens, Chris Coom, Luis Azcona Latissa, Stefan Sonnenberg Karstens, Martin Hinchelwood, Ove Holmberg, Steve Beemant, and many others. If you want to discuss this document, and contribute to the curation of its content, join the group https colon slash slash groups google com slash g slash agile informed decision making. They all have spent hours, days, weeks, and even months codifying, debating, verifying, and generously sharing their findings with the shared purpose of improving the state of affairs for everyone. This is an open-source document where we collect and share valuable information. These are the guidelines for the contributors. You can at any time to fix spelling mistakes. Please don't remove things others wrote. Except if people misquoted you, in which case you correct. If you quote someone, please inform them, so they can read if they still agree. With the quote. If you disagree with something, add a comment and start a civil discussion. As safe is a controversial topic for many, we want to stress that we want a civilized conversation, no shouting match. Feel free to add, write, comment, spread, and read. If you like it, share it. FAQ. How do you define success? What is good agile? How do you define success in adopting agile? One answer that is loosely inspired by the definition of success of a methodology by Alistair Cockburn is this. Success is when an organization achieves a level of agility that brings tangible lasting benefits to their business, and those who did the work would continue to use and evolve the adopted ways of working instead of ditching it. This is the very practical definition assumed by this document. There is also a historical definition. Around the year 2000, Agile was a fringe movement, and at that time, the majority of medium to large IT projects failed more often than they succeeded. The burden of proof that Agile actually works was all on Agile practitioners. Back. Then they achieved a long sequence of repeated successes that later contributed to Agile's popularity and later its path to becoming mainstream. 
this historical definition shows that succeeding with good agile is not a hypothesis, an abstract aspiration or a mirage, but something that's already been achieved repeatedly and consistently. A final provocative definition comes from this quote, some things can't be told. You live them or you don't, but they can't be told. A message to safe coaches and scaled agile incorporated. Many safe coaches and trainers are friends, respected co-workers, and competent agile. Professionals. The content of this document is not intended as a reflection of their talent, professionalism and expertise, but as a reflection of the safe framework. Scaled Agile Incorporated is invited to engage with the agile community and is encouraged to act on the parts of the feedback that are constructive and useful. Case Studies It is not uncommon in IT for a marketing department to offer special discounts or other benefits to customers in exchange for permission to publish a successful case study. Regardless of any actual success, the case studies below have been selected because they have been scrutinized, verified, with multiple sources or coming from sources that are less likely to have a vested interest. U.S. Air Force. In December 2019, Nicholas M. Chalin, then Chief Software Officer at the U.S. Air Force, issued a memorandum as part of the DoD Enterprise Dev SEC Ops Initiative. The memorandum concluded by strongly discouraging the use of rigid, prescriptive frameworks such as the Scaled Agile Framework, SAFE. In a highly publicized move, Scaled Agile Inc. offered free consulting to address the concerns. From the memorandum. Later, the USAF CSO confirmed the conclusions from the memorandum were still standing, and SAFE was still strongly discouraged and will not be used in any form in their Dev SEC Ops initiative. ThoughtWorks. ThoughtWorks is a global technology company that has pioneered lean and agile. After observing, between 2015 and 2021, several clients that had adopted SAFE. ThoughtWorks advised against adopting SAFE. These are some of the things they observed from the clients that had adopted SAFE. SAFE created friction in the organizational structure and its operating model, promoted silos, hindered tech from creating business capabilities, generated waste in the value stream and discouraged creativity, limited autonomy and experimentation. Blue Dolphin Blue Dolphin consultant Wolfram Miller together with a hub of other consultants including Steve Tendon has worked in recent years helping several organizations to deal with issues after they adopted SAFE. They recently analyzed the performance of teams from a company department of 200 software developers who have been working with Essential SAFE for 1.5 years. The result highlights the same problems typical of the traditional pre-agile approaches. There are no signs that Essential Safe help them increase their agility and improve. Volvo Cars Volvo Cars was founded in 1927. It is headquartered in Gothenburg, Sweden. It has around 40,000 employees and produces around 700,000 cars per year. July 29th In software development, it employs about 10,000 people with about 150 million lines of code per car. Nowadays cars are steadily becoming computers on wheels. Between 2017 and the end of 2019 Volvo cars went through two years and a half agile. Transformation phase to scale agile was safe. In a 2020 interview with the head of continuous improvement and change at product. Creation, there is evidence of a lack of focus on technical excellence as instead suggested. By the agile principles. The interview also reveals a focus on processes and a hierarchical, top-down approach, but no focus on the Agile mindset. Two academic case studies by the Chalmers University of Technology also confirm the lack of focus on the Agile mindset and the lack of alignment with Lean and Agile principles, a hierarchical approach with an org chart made deeper by additional levels. One of the papers also notes the inflexibility of SAFE and its disadvantages. Three years later, Volvo Cars is still using SAFE in several parts of the organization. In September 2022, an internal source confirmed that a whole department in Volvo dropped 
safe after it became obvious to them it wasn't adding value. Since then the teams were functioning in a fairly agile way in spite of the safe limitations. The PI planning was becoming mostly for show and the real organization of the work and the collaboration was happening much more fluidly. The program board was adding very little value in the face of the significant effort spent for it. This change involved 11 teams and just over 100 people including product owners, software developers, UX designers, graphic designers, subject matter experts, etc. They wanted to honor how the teams want to continuously plan and not just how they want to work, empowering teams to apply pressure upwards to the organization in order to continuously improve. ANZ Bank Initiatives for Scaling Agile ANZ, Australia and New Zealand Banking Group Limited is an Australian multinational banking and financial services company headquartered in Melbourne, Victoria. In 2016 SAFE was rolled out in one part of ANZ, says Sam Klein, in an event sponsored by Scaled Agile Incorporated, and one of their premium implementation. Partners, the rollout has been listed among some of Australia's most successful SAFE implementations. A second and bigger initiative started in 2017. In 2017, CEO Shane Elliott wanted to reshape the bank's state culture to give ANZ customers more and faster by introducing Agile. Shane Elliott was taking inspiration from what technology companies from Amazon to Microsoft did and looking at what some banks such as ING and ABN AMRO had been doing, although with mixed results. He focused on processes implementing an approach for scaling. Agile across its Australian division and focused on tools, through an enterprise agreement. With Atlassian for the use of Jira and Confluence. August 29th. In a 2018 article by Michael Gibson, Senior Analytics Delivery Lead in ANZ References Safe and its influences still present at the time. In another 2018 article, Gene Diudan, product, owner and business owner's tribe at ANZ, mentions a copy-paste approach of elements of the Spotify model and a reference to McKinsey's articles containing several misrepresentations of Agile. To summarize, both initiatives aimed at scaling Agile instead of achieving agility at scale. The first initiative relied on a proven recipe and the second initiative relied on copying and tailoring solutions from other organizations instead of growing and evolving their own approach based on the specific needs, context, and circumstances of ANZ, all things that nowadays Agile experts strongly advise against. Despite promises that the 2017 initiative would lead to Agile, teams delivering a digital transformation to generate growth and underpin the bank's residential mortgage business. Five years later the bank's technology systems still lag behind its biggest competitors. This may be inferred from the bank's home loan approval systems becoming one of the slowest in Australia, and for that ANZ lost a substantial share of the $2 trillion mortgage market. Its share price is down 17% since Elliott became CEO seven years ago. Martin North, the founder of DFA Analytics, says, I don't rate ANZ as an agile organization. In fact, I would say that they're quite sluggish in terms of some of the things that they're doing. Capital One. Scaled Agile Incorporated. Case study on Capital One, published in 2017, states that in 2013 software development in Capital One commercial banking was largely outsourced and conducted. Following a waterfall approach. At the time, they took steps toward building an agile workforce. For such an endeavor, Mike Eason as commercial banking CIO selected the SAFE framework and started with the goal of reimagining product and delivery through agile, moving beyond the rhetoric of business and IT alignment and having agile teams dedicated to their products, services, and broader business strategies. They also targeted having 100% of the workforce trained and many of those in key roles certified. In reality, SAFE already existed in pockets between 2012 to 2014 in various departments within commercial bank and card, even if not as the recognized standard approach. It is during this time, 
following the acquisition of ING Direct, that a safe program to bring together some parts of ING Direct and Capital One's technical ecosystems was largely deemed unsuccessful. And even after that Capital One Agile transformation wasn't 100% safe. Around 2017, while Scaled Agile Incorporated was publishing the Capital One case study, the leadership started to express doubts about the value of their Agile adoption and the Scrum master role. This triggered the following event. A couple of years later in May 2019, Capital One announced they were adding more responsibilities to the Scrum master role related to delivery thus making the role more technical. In doing so they also renamed the role to Agile Delivery Lead. What was described in the announcement is congruent with reports. September 29th. That, while the tech and product teams were closer than ever, and other departments were starting to embrace agility, unfortunately, there was a persistent product versus tech, or us versus them phenomenon. This is in contrast to what Good Agile suggests, and the goal originally set for the initiative. The experiment to rename the Scrum Master role to Agile Delivery Lead turned into a role. Rename without the necessary work to make the change required to add value. This confirmed the doubts about the value of Capital One Agile adoption leading to the following event. In January 2023, a Capital One press release announced, citing the challenging operating conditions that they were eliminating all the 1,100 Agile roles with an action that speaks louder than the success claimed by Scaled Agile Incorporated. Case study for the SFA-driven Capital One's Agile transformation. Many of the safe scrum masters affected had a tendency to follow safe by the book in a prescriptive way. The announcement reaffirmed that in Capital One, Agile was siloed into IT without the necessary involvement of the business. Additionally, it made it clear that Capital One is committed to its journey to mirror successful technology companies with high levels of agility, like for example the FANG companies and ThoughtWorks, where the Scrum Master and Agile Coach responsibilities have been taken up by the team and cease to be a role. Those companies empower each and every team to be Agile in their own way, without prescribing the adoption of any out of the box solution like SAFE, or any other framework adopted by the book. Sunil Mundra, the author of Enterprise Agility Book, after reading the announcement of the layoffs commented on the SAFE case study on LinkedIn saying, If everything was so, hunky-dory, what happened? Fitbit. Fitbit is one of the success stories promoted by Scaled Agile Incorporated. Fitbit Incorporated is an American company founded in 2007 with its headquarters in San Francisco. It now has about 15 offices around the world. In 2019, Fitbit was reported to have sold more than 100 million devices and have 28 million users. Between 2015 and 2016, Fitbit adopted. Safe. Damian Brown, Sr., Director of Program Management Office, describes the success of Safe. Citing criteria, such as processes and teams' velocity, that are irrelevant for Agile teams and show a lack of paradigm shift or an Agile mindset. He continues commenting on the company's growth and the commercial success of the new products released. But the financial data, reports from financial analysts, and other publicly available data contradict that. A person working at Fitbit confirmed the lack of autonomy of the teams and added that later. Fitbit had abandoned SAFE, and the person that had persuaded the company to try it had left the company as well. The Fitbit case study is still listed on the SAFE website as a success story. This story seems far from being a success. October 29th. Pixies. Pixis is a French technology company that creates and operates digital solutions for the whole discount ecosystem, discount, com, C-Logistics, Octopia ET discount advertising. They employ about 650 technology enthusiasts. Around 2020 Pixis made a big bet by entering the B2B market with a new marketplace as a service product. As a consequence, the company felt the need for a new 
organization that could help them grow while staying focused and aligned. And this led them to SAFE. One problem they encountered with SAFE was the long value creation cycle, their time to market TTM, the time between the prioritization of a feature before the discovery and the activation date of this feature was around one year. The delivery PI that follows after the discovery phase on a PI was part of the problem. The fast and dynamic nature of their new endeavor did not fit well with the safe approach of freezing the priorities for an entire quarter. SAFE also led them to focus heavily on delivery and deliverables instead of what their customers wanted and expected from them. They faced a huge work in progress, WIP, with a lot of multitasking. The overly detailed nature of the framework made people feel overloaded, which ironically was the opposite of the lesson from team topologies recently assimilated by SAFE. The SAFE approach to dependencies accommodating during the PI instead of creating value-aligned teams that minimize dependencies, also created more problems. In conclusion, they realized SAFE was holding them back from greater agility and product. Focus while worsening their team's working conditions. Ultimately for Pixies, SAFE proved to be more of a hindrance than an advantage. Bayer Electronics Bayer Electronics is a Swedish company that since 1981 is a B2B business that designs and manufactures human-machine interface terminals and automation software. The company is based in Malmo, with a presence in Europe, Asia, and the Americas. At the beginning of 2017, Bayer Electronics employed in software development about 70 people in six teams and decided to embark on a safe transformation to become more agile. After doing so, they started to notice that at every quarter at the PI instead of becoming faster, more agile, and things getting better, things were actually getting worse, the spillovers. From sprint to sprint were increasing, trust between technical and product people were going down, and customers' need went unfulfilled. In the fall of 2020, they got inspired by the work of Marty Kagan the Silicon Valley-based product executive that vouches for a product-centric lightweight agile approach. In June 2021 they decided to leave SAFE behind and move forward adopting several ideas. Inspired by Marty Kagan's work, for example. Putting the customer at the center, starting with understanding customers' context and needs, instead of getting lost in the formalities of planning and requirements and measurement of outputs instead of valuable outcomes. November 29th. Bringing product and tech people together in each team instead of having separated. Program, product and tech divisions, shifting toward the practice and the culture of. Real collaboration instead of being separated by the hierarchical roles and functional. Separation of the organization structure. Empowering teams and team members to benefit from everyone's talent, company. Experience, and technical and product experience instead of being silenced by the formal bureaucratic processes and the top-down structure. Iterative and incremental fast feedback-driven collaborative product discovery. Activities instead of the top-down prescriptive plan-driven approach. After leaving behind SAFE and starting to focus on these and other changes they started to see actual improvements and happier customers. The positive results continued to come in. The following years. Conclusions. So far in all the safe case studies that allow for some form of verification or third-party observations, there is no evidence that in the face of the time spent and the effort made, safe brought any lasting benefits or made the organization any more agile. Where most of those case studies observed show that after the safe adoption, whatever the reason may be, the shortcomings that are typical of the pre-agile approaches have been amplified, overall making things worse. It is also known that SAFE isn't used by any of the leading innovative software companies, such as Facebook, Google, Netflix, Microsoft, and the like, or any of the best product companies. This overall picture is congruent with the growing number of anecdotal evidence emerging from senior leaders and employees sharing stories about their previous companies where SAFE was adopted. SAFE Experts' Opinion A small significant sample of former SAFE experts, some instrumental in shaping SAFE. 
Al Shalloway, former SAFE Principal Contributor and Trainer, SBCT. Al Shalloway has been one of the three initial SAFE Principal Contributors for six years, the first SAFE Program Consultant Trainer, SBCT, outside Scale Agilink, and his company, was a SAFE Gold Partner. In 2018, he broke off his relationship with Scaled Agilink and SAFE, citing among the reasons that SAFE has grown considerably more complex than it needed to be, and that he was told to prove he had done a few by the book SAFE Adoptions to Renew His SBCT Certification. December 29th. Mr. Shalloway's view is that SAFE brings some very useful concepts to Agile, Flows slash Lean. Although not well implemented, but at least mentioned, big room planning to start a large scale, over 300 people, adoption of Agile, DevOps, an overall value stream view, large room, planning when it's useful, and more. However, while it is a good first step for very large organizations that can't deliver in three months, it is not a good approach for any company with less than 500 developers and it usually stagnates after three to six months, often leaving companies worse off than when they started. SAFE starts well by getting people into agile release trains, identifying dependencies, and keeping work below capacity for one to two program increments. But this is just a first step, and without further decomposition of arts and a simpler product management system based on minimum business increments, it reverts back into a push model where the waste that results comes back. After this, management tends to revert to worse habits than before, and a push for consistency gets stronger. Mr. Shalloway believes that stagnated safe adoptions can be improved and that people don't need to start over. But what's needed is not offered by SAI. Bob Galen, former safe program consultant, SPC. Bob Galen became SAFE SPC certified around 2013. He tried to understand, support, and apply it, but then he struggled with it for a long time to the point that he just couldn't be associated with it any longer. In his farewell to SAFE he mentioned several reasons, here are a few. It's too big. It creates far too many roles, layers, flows, etc. It's too focused on certifications and training. It created Lazy organizations who think the framework does the heavy lifting for them. It created a community of SPCs and other consultants who look at every problem and think SAFE is the solution. Conclusions This is a small sample of a growing group of SAFE experts that are publicly distancing themselves from SAFE. There are many others, like Alex Yakima, first SAFE associate, methodologist and SAFE fellow, that simply moved on. Their motivations seem congruent with the problems observed in the case studies and by other experts and practitioners. Comments from the authors of some practices. Assimilated by SAFE. Jeff Gothelf, co-creator of Lean UX. Jeff Gothelf is the co-creator and co-author of Lean UX. He has direct experience with SAFE. And indirect experience with several clients. 13-29 Commenting on how SAFE and Lean UX works together, he says, All the principles we've built into Lean UX don't seem to exist in SAFE. Based on what his clients are being taught by their SAFE trainers slash consultants, they are unable to see how SAFE and Lean UX can mix together. Neither does he have any good answers for them, since deviating from the framework is considered heresy in most cases. Dave Farley, co-author of Continuous Delivery Dave Farley is a pioneer of continuous delivery, an expert in DevOps, and co-author of the first and most relevant book on continuous delivery. After working with several clients that have adopted SAFE, he noted that SAFE release trains practices anti-continuous integration where continuous integration is a fundamental technical practice of Agile that continuous delivery is built on. That means that release trains in SAFE are anti-continuous delivery. Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland, co-creators of Scrum. Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland are two of the creators of Scrum and co-authors of the Scrum Guide. They are also part of the group of authors of the Agile Manifesto. They both criticize SAFE, as detailed later in the document. 
Jeff Sutherland in particular says that SAFE is inconsistent with the Scrum Guide and codifies dysfunctions that can cripple teams for years. Ken Schwaber says that there is a fundamental philosophical schism between Scrum and SAFE because Scrum controls risk through empiricism while SAFE tries to control risk through predictability. Conclusions This is a small sample of authors of original practices that have been integrated into SAFE who say the integration of their practices is fundamentally flawed. A larger number of experts share similar comments about other practices that have been integrated into SAFE. Agile Experts' Opinion Ron Jeffries, co-author of the Agile Manifesto Ron Jeffries published on his personal website a very constructive, detailed long list of criticisms about SAFE. His criticisms have fallen on deaf ears, and instead— the latest versions of SAFE have even worsened the problems. 14-29 Andy Hunt, co-author of the Agile Manifesto Andy Hunt states that SAFE is not an agile approach. He also mentioned professionals that made a career fixing severe problems caused by failed SAFE adoptions. Martin Fowler, co-author of the Agile Manifesto Martin Fowler is also chief scientist in ThoughtWorks so you can imagine that the view of ThoughtWorks on SAFE, also documented here, is congruent with his view. During a panel at the GoTo conference, he made very clear his dislike for SAFE. Alastair Cockburn, co-author of the Agile Manifesto. Alastair Cockburn suggested that the money and time spent on installing SAFE could produce much better results when spent instead on improving collaboration and delivery that in turn would move the company's attitude and behavior some distance. He added at that point that he stopped defending SAFE because he thinks there is a better way to spend the money. Brian Marek, co-author of the Agile Manifesto. Brian Marek described SAFE nature as problematic and prescriptive due to the set of rules to follow, with a threat to enforce them. And he also described SAFE processes as overly codified to the point that they actively work against the collective creation of tacit knowledge. Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland, co-authors of the Agile Manifesto. Ken Schwaber and Jeff Sutherland are part of the group of authors of the Agile Manifesto and two of the creators of Scrum. As mentioned before, they both criticize SAFE. Ken Schwaber equates SAFE to RUP, an abandoned heavyweight methodology. He comments further saying that a core premise of Agile is that the people doing the work are the people who can best figure out how to do it and that the job of management is to do anything to help them do so, not suffocate them with SAFE. Jeff Sutherland says that he finds scaling frameworks like SAFE overly prescriptive and limited in their efficacy. Mike Beadle was co-author of the Agile Manifesto. Mike Beadle was an American theoretical physicist turned software engineer, and he was the author of the first book and earliest papers about Scrum. He was also a co-author in a Signatory of the Agile Manifesto, 15-29. He debated that SAFE is not Agile, and he added that there are many other better alternatives. He articulated how SAFE in particular, and the Agile Release Trains concept, violate all the values in the Agile Manifesto. Other experts' opinions. A small significant sample of recognized experts from various relevant areas. Chris Matz. Chris Matz is an experienced Agile practitioner specializing in delivering trading and risk management systems and investment banks. He contributed to BDD with Daniel. Terhorse North, he developed feature injection practice and with Olav Moss and he introduced the concept of real options in Agile. Chris highlights that the creators of SAFE have not engaged with the wider Agile community in the usual debate that challenges the new practices in a process that validates and improves them and ultimately gives, or not, credibility. Chris adds that he is not aware of a single leader in the Agile community that has endorsed SAFE. As an example of the flaws of SAFE he mentions the definition of epics in SAFE. And he also challenges the idea that SAFE could be a stepping stone to good Agile. He also extensively examines the pre-agile culture he names as failureship as opposed to leadership. In such failure culture, there are a set of behaviors that prevent change and perpetuate the status quo. 
there may lay an explanation for why some organizations choose. Safe. Marty Kagan. Marty Kagan is a Silicon Valley-based product executive with more than 20 years of experience with industry leaders including eBay, AOL, Netscape Communications, and Hewlett Packard. Based on all Marty Kagan has read and heard, he says he would not want to work in a company using SAFE. He can't either imagine any of the strong tech product companies he knows choosing to move to SAFE, and if for some reason they did, he'd be pretty certain their top talent would leave. He believes that with SAFE the core benefits of Agile and Lean are lost. And he found in SAFE all ten key attributes of waterfall and project mindset that are the most common root. Causes of product failure in product companies. Mary Popendiek. Mary Popendiek, with her husband Tom Popendiek, is the co-author of the book Lean. Software Development, a seminal book for the Agile community. 16-29. She agrees with the overall conclusion of the U.S. Air Force Memorandum which is to strongly discourage the use of rigid, prescriptive frameworks such as SAFE. She has this to say specifically. Every large Agile framework that I know of is an excuse to avoid the difficult and challenging work of sorting out the organization's system architecture so that small Agile teams can work independently. You do not create smart, innovative teams by adding more process. You create them by breaking dependencies. Dave Snowden David John Snowden is a researcher in the field of knowledge management and the creator of the Sinophon Framework Applied in Software Development and Management Science. Overall, he expressed a very negative view of SAFE. Among other comments, he explained that SAFE employs ordered world approaches to solve complex problems, and because of that it's a priori wrong. As a result, he adds, SAFE is a massive step backwards, not a forward move. Steve Denning Steve Denning is a recognized expert and author in leadership, management, innovation. In some of his articles, he describes the efforts to scale Agile with SAFE as counterproductive. He further criticizes SAFE stating that it destroys the very essence of Agile, and it degrades and undermines everything in Agile that is authentic and useful. He added that SAFE gives to organizations a mandate to call themselves Agile while keep doing what they have always done, reaching the conclusion that SAFE is the epitome of fake. Agile. Barry W. Bohm. Barry W. Bohm was a prominent American software engineer and author of the Kakamo Costing Model and the Spiral Model Software Process. In a publication that predates SAFE, Barry W. Bohm comments on plan driven methods as those trying to be all inclusive and requiring extensive efforts to be tailored down. All these are characteristics commonly associated with SAFE and then he contrasts and compares plan-driven methods with Agile. Unfortunately, most plan-driven methods suffer from a tailoring-down syndrome. These plan-driven methods are developed by experts who want to provide users with guidance for most or all foreseeable situations. The experts therefore make them very comprehensive, but tailorable down for less critical or less complex situations. 17-29 Plan-driven methods have had a tradition of developing all-inclusive methods that can be tailored down to fit a particular situation. Non-experts tend to play it safe and use the whole thing, often at considerable unnecessary expense. Agilists offer a better approach of starting with relatively minimal sets of practices and only adding extras where they can be clearly justified by cost-benefit. As we have seen with RUP, efforts are underway to develop similar approaches for building up plan-driven methods. He further compares plan-driven and agile methods across five critical factors, namely size, criticality, dynamism, personnel, and culture, noting the asymmetry in plan-driven and agile methods that tend to succeed on the opposite scale ends of those factors. And he comments on how combining and balancing the two methods is an extremely difficult task. James Shore James Shore is the co-author of the classic Agile How to Guide, The Art of Agile Development and a recipient of the Agile Alliance's Gordon Pask Award for Contributions to 
Agile Practice. In his second edition of The Art of Agile Development, James added an entire chapter on scaling. He cautions, far too often, organizations try to scale agile without actually having the ability to be agile in the first place. Regarding SAFE specifically, I've yet to see it work. Well, companies tend to adopt it with great fanfare, only to silently drop it several years. Later, on PI planning, it's predictive, not adaptive, extremely labor-intensive and draining. And it doesn't work well with remote teams. He concludes, all in all, SAFE pays lip service to a mishmash of agile ideas without seeming to truly understand them. I don't recommend it. Sample of practitioners' opinions. A list of opinions from practitioners that details the problems they identified in SAFE. These opinions may reflect the possible reactions of the employees in an organization. Adopting SAFE. Kuhn Vastman's The Agile Blender Blunder. Kuhn Vastman's noted that SAFE blends into the framework many good concepts and techniques from different authors, and in the process misrepresents the original ideas, loses entirely the related mindset and fundamental elements that make those ideas work, claims. The copyright of those ideas, while unsuspecting practitioners that learn Agile through, safe are left with these misrepresentations and ends up themselves causing confusion. Among other practitioners, Kuhn Vastmans in his post lists and drills down into several of such misrepresented concepts and techniques. Scrum. Team topologies. Invest. Planning poker. 18-29. Deming's PDCA cycle. DevOps and Calm. The points made by Kuhn Vastman's Unsafe are congruent with comments above from several authors of practices assimilated by SAFE. Powell Huron, Watch Out, Waterfall Ahead. The Truth About SAFE. Powell Huron comments in his post on various aspects of SAFE, where he notes that SAFE adopts a waterfall approach to requirements. Safe processes and roles show a lack of trust and autonomy of development teams. Safe focuses on plans and output more than on outcomes and feedback. Safe version of Scrum deviates from the real Scrum making it worse. He concludes by suggesting that with Safe an organization doesn't feel the need to change. Anything substantial, but with it, they feel they can call themselves. Agile. Kevin Bendler. I don't like Safe. Kevin Bendler, after working several years with SAFE, comments on seven flaws he noticed in the framework's adoption. In SAFE, extensive front loaded planning encourages ineffective larger batch size work. Technical debt tends to increase in SAFE organizations. SAFE program increment PI, cycle time is unfit for teams that need to be responsive. SAFE roles and structure may discourage teams' collaboration, that's an agile value. Safe approaches to estimation is more predictive than empirical as in Agile. Safe focus more on output and volume than the value created and delivered. Safe doesn't have enough focus on the feedback loop and related learnings. He concludes by saying he thinks that trying to scale Agile up by applying heavyweight. Top-down methodologies is antithetical and counterproductive. Sam Haynes, Safe, a waterfall pig with Agile lipstick. Sam Haynes, based on his observations of SAFE implementations, thinks that SAFE's ask for excessive time to developers for estimations and metrics is demotivating. SAFE requirement of starting by getting everyone SAFE trained and certified is suspicious. SAFE, branded Agile, risk to discredit genuine Agile. PI planning tries to manage dependencies instead of having a loosely coupled architecture. PI planning cadence doesn't allow to timely react slash adapt to changing customer needs. PI planning and release trains are inferior to on-demand planning and continuous. Delivery. He wonders why anyone with a genuine agile mindset would be using SAFE in the first. Place. Luca Minutal, my opinion on SAFE. Luca Minutal analyses various aspects of the framework and comments on their practical. Implications noting that. The 12 steps SAFE implementation roadmap is like a one size fits all waterfall program. SAFE budgeting and portfolio management don't solve the problems of annual budgeting and planning due to the prescriptive, top down, rigid nature of most SAFE implementations. 
SAFE requirements model is a pre-agile deliverable-oriented hierarchical decomposition. Of the work mirroring the hierarchy of the roles in SAFE, it reinforces a top-down approach. SAFE roles add more bureaucracy, disempower the teams, and make collaboration harder. PI planning hinders business tech collaboration, accommodates dependencies instead of removing them, and perpetuates a top-down pre-agile approach. Release trains is a very inefficient pre-agile practice inferior to all the modern alternatives. Overly complicated safe contradicts the agile principle of simplicity and emergence. Following his observations, he concludes that safe violates all four agile values. Eve Hanno, my opinion on safe. When I first heard of safe, I was hearing the same kind of negative things as I heard when I first heard of Scrum. From people doing XP or Kanban, from people doing Scrum. So I decided to look for a safe project to experience it myself, as I did not want to just have an opinion based on theory. After that project, my general feeling was, safe goes further than the companies implementing it want to go, and does not go as far as what the companies really need. I saw that at best it was a gateway drug to Agile. Yet in most companies it just gives a new name to an old way of working. A nice example is dependencies, instead of making dependencies transparent to start working on removing them, they at best visualize them to show them as reality. I used to think it was nice they showed many different techniques to a large audience. Now I see that not only do they explain them badly and give practitioners a bad start with a new technique, but they also try to copyright techniques from Agile friends. The sentence, this is not agile, is not agile in itself, yet calling a cat a dog does not make it bark. Many others. There is a growing number of agile practitioners documenting and posting their experience with SAFE. Links to some of these posts have been added in Appendix 1. General SAFE trends. The adoption of SAFE and its market share are still growing. The less flattering trends below come from anecdotal evidence. A growing number of agile and certified SAFE professionals have publicly decided not to work with clients adopting SAFE. It occasionally comes up also at meetings among agile professionals and some recruiters reported candidates refusing job opportunities because of SAFE. The number of experienced agile professionals publicly criticizing SAFE is also increasing. There is a growing number of senior leaders and former employees of organizations that tried to adopt SAFE that are sharing stories of stalled and abandoned adoptions, adoptions that went wrong, and problems caused by SAFE. 20. The number and frequency of posts on social media and articles in online magazines about failed SAFE adoptions is also increasing. More organizations are asking for agile professionals who are framework agnostic and who have enough experience to work without the need for a guardrail from a scaled framework. It is not possible to say if these trends are ordinary byproducts of the increasing adoptions of SAFE, if they are due to SAFE itself, the quality of its implementations, the characteristics of the organizations choosing that framework, or other factors. Final Conclusions Each one of the opinions of top experts and authors of a practice assimilated by SAFE, and each scrutinized case study and practitioner opinion, taken alone in isolation is not enough to draw a conclusion. At the same time all of them together, with their similarities seem to suggest that the implementations of SAFE tend to lack fundamental elements of good agile that are vital to achieving agility, amplify some of the well-known problems and limitations of pre-agile traditional solutions, waste a lot of time and effort for learning and adopting outdated, or second best practices. Alternatives to SAFE At the moment there is not one best practice, standard solution, or silver bullet that can guarantee an organization to increase its technical agility, organizational agility, business agility, achieve tangible and lasting benefits for its business and ultimately become more successful, innovative, and resilient. For decades the whole industry has been trying to find a solution to this, while at the same time, the opportunities and the challenges organizations face are also changing and evolving. 
but after over ten years since when large organizations are trying to become agile, we know that there are much better options than SAFE. Not recommended. All heavyweight frameworks like SAFE, which promise to scale agile, have problems similar to or equivalent to SAFE. All the CAN solutions and standard recipes for agile transformations, digital transformations, and scaling agile, coming from large consultancy firms, don't work either. Chttps colon slash slash bit a y slash agile offering for decision makers. All attempts to copy and paste solutions of other organizations, like trying to replicate the Spotify model, have also failed repeatedly. 21. Also, the attempts to extend or customize safe or other heavyweight frameworks for a particular industrial sector have failed. Attempts to adopt Agile following one framework by the book of running an Agile transformation using a waterfall program don't work either. The original idea is assimilated by SAFE. One of the things SAFE does is group ideas that have been invented by the Agile community. Unfortunately in the process, they are often misrepresented or worsened, and in most cases, it is not properly made clear where these ideas are borrowed from. 1. Approach is to go back to the original ideas as they are really intended. Below, in Appendix 2 we are gathering the list of these ideas with links to the original. Sources. As SAFE has assembled a lot from the Agile community, this should be a long list. Please, add anything you think is missing. Recommended. Successful Agile adoptions or organizations that have successfully developed their technical organizational and business agility with lasting benefits for their business, often present. Some common elements. These elements are listed below. For a more detailed list of available alternatives follow the related links in Appendix 3. Your chances of success are greatly increased by taking inspiration from these elements. Below. Embracing an experimental approach to Agile adoptions has been instrumental in many successful adoptions. It consists in starting small and proceeding with small experiments, learning, adapting, and evolving. It focuses on making things work well in the small before going bigger. Furthermore, it is an agile approach to adopting. Agile. The journey through these experiments, the mistakes, and the related learning are instrumental to understanding, learning, adopting, and adapting agile to your specific organization's needs. Using a people-centered approach where employees are invited to participate in the adoption and where autonomy to individuals and teams is increased, has worked well. 2. Building on the previous point, a focus on team autonomy, coupled with alignment to clear customer outcomes and wrapped up with lightweight governance, instead of the hierarchical and complex safe approach, is certainly a more effective way of scaling. Agile across an organization. 22. What has also worked well is a focus on descaling the problem. For example, through modularization, aligning teams and the organization along individual products and services and more in general along value streams, take a look at team. Topologies for an in-depth introduction on this. And also through technical. Excellence reducing and relaxing cross-team dependencies. A pluralistic approach that takes elements from various non-scaled Agile frameworks. Think of extreme programming, crystal clear, DSDM, Kanban, Scrum, etc. And patterns and practices available from the Agile community has also worked well. This approach is informed and guided in each of its steps by the values and principles of Agile, Lean, and human complexity. Exploring team types, their composition and their interactions is a key factor too. Consider when one considers ways of working across an entire organization. There are a number of constructs that explore this in more detail. Team Topologies by Matthew Skelton and Manuel Pius explores team types. Topologies. Sriram Narayan in his book Agile IT Organization Design explores similar. Sooner Safer Happier by John Smart at all explores safety teams. Managing Digital by Charles Betts explores team spectrums. Extra Dependent Teams by David Kesby Explores Same Skilled Teams There's more exhaustive organizational design literature but the above is a good 
place to get started. There are also learning triads as well which are worth exploring. Two but don't tend to be a long-term team given the size. The above should be considered in the context of an existing organization but won't necessarily give you concrete practices to descale the work slash interactions slash dependencies although it's a good start. What people often need is a platform-based approach, see Jade Bloom, and the book Continuous Architecture by Murat Erder and Pierre Purer. A focus on technical agility and technical excellence is also a trait common to successful agile adoptions, with a reference to the domain-specific technical practices used to build the product or to supply the service the organization offers. The journey itself to learn and adopt Agile is unavoidable. It is not possible in any way to fast-forward or skip to the finale. Each Agile adoption is a gradual process of exploration and discovery. The destination takes shape and acquires meaning by going through the journey. And it is a place where continuous improvement is the norm. 23. Thank you. Thank you for writing, commenting, reading, and spreading this document. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. I hope this audio representation of SafeDelusion.com has helped you to rapidly absorb the content. Remember, you should share this with other individuals who are confused or bewildered about SAFE. And if you have any questions or comments, do put them in the chat below. I wish you all the best in your Agile journey. Remember to stay Agile. Agile is predominantly a philosophy, a mindset that embodies a set of values and principles that comes to life when it is actually put to practice intentionally with teams working together with a collaborative focus to offer value to individuals, to offer value to customers, to offer benefits to ensure that the desired outcome is realized. Remember what the Agile Manifesto says, our highest priority is to satisfy the customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable product. Remember, through this work, we have come to value individuals and interactions over unwieldy processes, frameworks, and tools work in product over comprehensive documentation. Remember, we have come to value customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. Thank you very much and bye for now.